In previous videos, we took you to Wingfield Castle and Wingfield Church, home to the Earls and Dukes of Suffolk. Today we're visiting Framlingham Castle, in the market town of Framlingham, Suffolk. So we're going to Framlingham Castle. Yeah, it's very pretty here. It's cute, like... <laughs> Yes, there's tons of little small farms. Everything is still kind of old-fashioned here. here. talked about there are a lot of medieval cottages here. Medieval? Cottage. Yes, there are like, um, there's a lot of areas like Harry Potter's house, what's on the movie, is in Suffolk. Okay. The, like a lot of timber framed buildings that are kind of slightly slanting to one side. Yes, sure. There's a lot of those in, in Suffolk. Okay. Yeah. That's in Lavenham. This is typical Norfolk and Suffolk countryside. Where my house is, it's uncharacteristically hilly, but uh, this is more typical. Flat. Yeah. It's a little bit hilly. A little bit, but it's pretty flat. Like, whenever you say I live in uh, Norfolk or Suffolk, people say, Oh, it's very flat there, isn't it? <laughs> We're still really near my house, so... It is, it's yes, more uh, hilly around. It is uh, 25 minutes. Yeah. Very close. Yeah. It's the most famous castle near my house. The castle was previously home to the powerful earls and dukes of Norfolk. That's the county neighbouring Suffolk. Framlingham is also where our beautiful friend Stephanie from Chateau de la Londe went to school and also where the fabulous Scott Man resides. The castle, with its striking outline, dominates the town today and has dramatic past. It is arguably one of East Anglia's most visually recognisable and historically important sites. With as many as 83 people living in the castle at any one time, the castle played a major role in the surrounding economy during its period of economic and political prominence. Although they own many castles in England, Framlingham Castle was the main seat of the Earls and Dukes of Norfolk. The Doomsday Book of 1086 shows that Roger Bigot, or Bigod, or Bigod, or maybe even Bigo, who started out as Sheriff of Norfolk, was granted the manor of Framlingham. Here he first built a timber fortress. Although no one can agree on how to pronounce the name, and I secretly think people avoid saying it, even though they were Norman, so originally French-speaking, I'm going to go with Bigod, since they're essentially an English family. Bigod is a name synonymous with castles in the region. Framlingham is just one of a string of castles in Suffolk owned by this family. Curious as their title is situated in Norfolk. They also owned castles in Bungie, I, Walton, and Thetford. I find it really sad that they're all in ruins today. But if you're interested, we may go and visit them as they're all nearby. The Dukes of Norfolk were historically the most powerful people in England apart from the monarch and throughout the centuries were continually in trouble for challenging the reigning monarch. Hugh Bigod, the first Earl of Norfolk, built the castle's first stone buildings sometime in the 12th century. However, the surname that usually comes to mind when anyone thinks of Dukes of Norfolk is the Howards. The Howards were immensely influential during the 15th and 16th centuries. You may remember from history class or movies about the era that the third Duke of Norfolk, Thomas Howard, arranged for two of his nieces, Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard, to marry the tyrant King Henry VIII. Although it sadly did not end well for these two women, 
and even a number of the Dukes of Norfolk, it's interesting that their ancestors remain influential to this day. We'll show you many of the people who have lived here throughout history in a little bit, and if you stick around to the end, I'll tell you how much it costs to get in and how you can save money on admission to all English heritage sites. But first, I just want to have a quick word about something very meaningful to Selmar and me. We'd like to do more videos, including in-depth videos about historic homes in England and in France, and things like art, costume making, and cooking that you've asked for. But in addition to things like tickets, travel expenses, and equipment costs, it takes an extraordinary amount of time and effort to create these in-depth videos. So if you like them, or even if you love our at home or in the garden videos and would like to see more of them, you can really help us out by simply subscribing and tapping the notifications bell. And if you really want to, you could even leave a sweet comment. It gives us a wonderful feeling in our hearts and also greatly helps us with a rather tricky YouTube algorithm. It takes a few seconds and it's free. It really helps. Framlingham is a Norman ringwork castle. This is a simplified version of the more commonly known Martin Bailey. As it stands today, there is unfortunately little to no sense of the lively bustle of court life that would have undoubtedly gone on inside these castle walls. We'll show you an artist's reconstruction a little later of what the castle probably used to look like. Actually, the castle was actually built out of wood, with the building work taking place somewhere between 1066 and 1107. Stone buildings were constructed later at the castle starting around 1150. It's unusual that there was no central keep at Framlingham, that is, a fortified central building within the already fortified walls. Keeps were common during the era, like nearby Orford Castle for example. The original buildings which were built along the inner side of the curtain walls have mostly disappeared, leaving the walls as a surrounding shell for later buildings of a poorhouse, which were built in the castle grounds and now hundreds of years old themselves. The curtain walls, which provide a spectacular view of the surrounding countryside, are 10.5 metres high and 2 and a third metres thick. Built for the practical purpose of defending the people within, these surrounding walls are the most intact part of the original building. Visitors can still walk around the ring-shaped structure, imagining what it was like to keep guard over a fortified medieval castle. Another iconic feature of the castle is its ornamental chimneys rising up from several of the 13 towers. These were added in the 15th century during improvements to the castle under John Howard, the first Duke of Norfolk. The stunning carved brickwork chimneys imitate those in other esteemed buildings like Hampton Court Palace. Most of the chimneys weren't actually functional, they were just added for visual appeal to make the castle look more prestigious. Like all the ancient constructions in East Anglia that we've seen, the walls of Framlingham Castle are made of local flint. Remember that stone that reminds me of hard English toffee that we showed you before? But they also include Subtaria, another rocky material also used in historic construction in this region.
So cold. Yeah, let's let's go down. <laughs> Due to destruction by angry kings, eventual decline and deconstruction, it can be very difficult to visualize what Framlingham was like. Here's an excellent illustration we found to help you picture it. Try to imagine a village inside of the walls with several buildings and a mixture of people from various walks of life going on about their day. Like any castle, there would have been spaces such as reception areas living quarters for both nobles and workers, kitchens, food stores, an armory, a treasury, and large stables. This is all what's left? Huh? Yeah. My goodness. Oven. And the old fireplace. Maybe, but 
think I'm going to get this all so you can take over. The last time I came, all this. We weren't members, so the cost was £29 for the two of us with the guidebook. That's a little under 40 American dollars or 35 euro. Although this included free parking, we honestly found the cost of general admission a little pricey. However, if you enjoy seeing historical places and plan to go to a few of them during the year, you could become an English Heritage member, which changes the cost of entry to any English Heritage site into a really great bargain. With membership, there's unlimited access to sites, free parking, extra benefits like free entry for up to six people under 18 years of age, and reduced prices on hundreds of related events. With 400 historic buildings, monuments, and sites under their care, you could go out every weekend for years and not run out of interesting places to see. So for a couple, it would work out to just a little over a pound each per site. And that's much less if you take along up to six children. Membership is pretty affordable, and there's even a lifetime membership if you're really keen on seeing historic places. If you'd like to become a member of English Heritage, we'll include a link in the description. If you do become a member, it actually helps us make more videos like this, and it doesn't cost you any extra.